Yep. I bet one of the keys opens the padlock. Yuck! This is a pigsty. Oh, of course. I forgot. Bennett told me the FBI agents in the military did a full search in here. All the better. Saves me more time. Looks like the county sheriff and Chapman got along really well. What big eyes you have. They have a dual visor, the normal part to cover your eyes, and the other, which, if I'm not mistaken, magnifies whatever you're looking at. Looks thick. Another clue that Chapman did not kill himself. With such a nice rope to hang himself, why would Chapman commit suicide with a gun and stain those hardwood floors? Of course, men do have a thing for... Hey, wait. Why isn't there any blood on the floor of the cabin? Hmm, this is getting more and more complicated. Whoever searched this joint really got into it. They left everything so organized. Now I understand why there's no clothesline in the yard. Fishing hooks, wire cutter, been there, done that. I don't think it has anything on it but dust. Wait, those are... Spider hairs. So long on the ground, I guess it's normal. But what a freaking huge spire, huh? I spent all night driving, and Gabo only let me rest for an hour or two. So I'd better not stare at it for too long. No, I'm not doing that. That's a great excuse for taking a load off. What's on your mind? You'll never guess what I found in an envelope addressed to Chapman. Surprise me. Does it contain some interesting document, perchance? No, no document. Hmm, what a shame. But it has some tiny little hairs inside. Like a spider's. I grew up in the country, you know, and sometimes those... Spider hairs. I should have known. What? I have to talk to the sheriff. Thanks to the envelope, he'll give me the information we need to prove Chapman didn't commit suicide. You keep searching around. We've almost got it. Okay. Looks like it's my job to find the supposed message that Chapman left for the judge. Get to work, Gina. Now that Bennett's gone, I can check to see if he forgot to search anywhere. Shrinks can be so absent-minded, you know. It's not that I don't trust him. Why can't I get you to trust me? Because you're a shrink. And what's that have to do when my friend Chapman died? I'm the one who found his body. I'm the one who informed the army and the feds. I told them Chapman would never have committed suicide. But did they listen to me? No. They took me off the case. They'd take care of it, but... Did they investigate? No. They treated Chapman like garbage. Just like the filth you sweep under the carpet. Shame on you. I swear I have nothing at all to do with any of that. And two days ago, the FBI calls me and says a guy will be coming to investigate Chapman's death. Do they reopen the case? No. We've got to keep it under wraps for now. I get all excited. I tell myself now they're finally going to investigate it right. I convince myself my friend's reputation will be cleared. But what do they do? Nothing. They send me a psychiatrist. A lousy shrink. Sheriff, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. You came here to tell me my friend killed himself because he was depressed or crazy or some other kind of junk. And you want me to cooperate? <laughs> no. Nothing here either. If Bennett left anything unsearched, 
I guess I'd have, too, because I didn't find anything new or interesting. Who knows? Maybe it would be a good idea to poke around a little more, though. Hey, I wonder how things are going for Bennett with the sheriff. I wish I had some way to see what they're doing, or even help him out if need be. I think Bennett mentioned that the line was cut off the day Chapman died, but someone came to fix it a few days later. I wonder if it works now. I could call. Let's see. Judge Whitley's office. Randall Lane speaking. Can I help you? Oh, there's no doubt about it. Chapman wanted to talk to the judge. Oops, I hung up on him. I think Bennett told me Chapman received a call a few hours before his death, and the line cut off during the call. Who are you? And why is you calling from Sad Belly's phone number? Huh? Dagnabbit. What was Sad Belly's real name again? Uh, Cappy? Chapo? Chapman. That's it. You a cop? No, uh, I'm his niece. Niece? The dumb one? The smart one. Well, well, well. The dumb one sure was pretty. I'm Barry from the gas station at Mile Marker 3. What can I do for you, miss? You're an antiquated old chauvinist pervert. And you're a horny little honeysuckle, right? Oh, no, I forgot you're the smart one. Just because I'm smart doesn't mean I'm ugly. All the same to me, sweetie pie. My cataracts are the size of a summer squash, so any warm-blooded female turned me on. Did you call Chapman? I mean, my Uncle Jerome, the evening of his death? Sure did. Some guys came into the station. I filled up their tanks, and they asked about your Uncle Jerome's cabin, so I showed them the way. Thanks for your help, Barry. Thank you, sweetie pie. What are you wearing under your... Yeah, I'll call him on his cell phone. Hello, Gina. How's everything going, Doctor? Oh, uh, wonderfully. Couldn't be better. <laughs> I understand. You're up a creek, but you can't talk. How's the sheriff doing? Oh, he's a great guy. Very pleasant and friendly. Okay. So if he were any unfriendlier, he'd be an attack dog, or worse, a bone? <laughs> you said it. Have you managed to get any information out of him? Not yet, but I feel optimistic. The sheriff is helping me a whole lot. <laughs> I get it. The jerk won't give you a shred of evidence. Yes, exactly. Very generous of him. Maybe I could convince him. After all... I have worn a sheriff's uniform before. you fred i'll get him to cooperate good luck with the sheriff i'll call you in a bit till then hey gina hey gabo what are you doing crossword puzzles sounds like he's in a bind Not that I know a lot about these things, but its peculiar shape demonstrates that the football was invented before the wheel.
They're empty. Bennett was right. I bet there was a laptop on this desk. The question is, where is it now? It has something hanging on it. Uh, okay, it's a, what do you call it? According to old Granny Timmons, lots of people used to wear these. A locket! For my lovey bear from your little squirrel. No comment. It's of Indian origin, a special design traditionally used for selling to tourists on the reservation. Seems to be in great shape. I don't remember the existence of any tribe of the obese owls. It's a quiver for holding arrows. Hope I don't prick myself. Are you still here? I'm not leaving until you help me. They turn the heat off at night. Better have some coffee. You'll get cold. But let me make it clear that nothing you say or do will get me to help you. I'm trying to quit drinking coffee. Why are you telling me this? Don't tell me you want to sue the coffee companies, too. Or maybe you're just trying to play the martyr and butter me up so I'll help you. That's it. Well, no. Do you also believe Chapman didn't commit suicide? Also? No, I alone do believe Chapman did not kill himself. I'm not from the FBI, and I don't need to pull the wool over any sheriff's eyes. The FBI didn't send me here. I came on my own. Sure. Oh, by the way, how much did the FBI pay you to come on your own? <laughs> Forget it. I don't belong to the FBI, but I have a friend who does, and he is secretly helping me. A friend? You are talking to me about friendship? I was Chapman's friend, and I won't help anyone tarnish his good name anymore. I was also a friend of Chapman's. A close friend. So you say. You want me to believe you? Well, then why don't you prove it? His wife, Annetta, had a very special nickname for him. What was it? Let's forget about the whole nickname thing for a while. I found an envelope at Chapman's house, and it contained some tiny spider hairs. Uh-huh. So? I know you have information regarding spiders in the Chapman case. Me? No. And you'd need one accurate lie detector to hear otherwise. I'm offering you the envelope as a sign of goodwill. Let me guess. You need my fingerprints on it to frame me and take me out of the picture, right? Excuse me, but I can't accept that. We'll talk about the envelope later. Were you really such great friends with Chapman? He left me his fishing rods in his will, and now they're my most prized possession. Need I say anything more? Talking with you is exhausting, and I doubt I'm going to get anywhere for now. I, I hope Gene's doing, doing better than, than I, I am. am. I could call. Hello, Gina. I think I can give you some other potential nicknames for Chapman. I'm all ears. Lovey Bear. Thanks, Gina. 
Good luck with the sheriff. I'll call you in a bit. Till then. Are you still here? I'm not leaving until you help me. I think I remember the nickname Annette Chapman called her husband now. I'm listening. Lovey Bear. And how do you know that, huh? I just do. Now it's your turn to answer a question. Chapman, a spider, what's the connection? Look at this. Chapman's arm. I took it when I found his body. I showed it to an entomologist in town, and it looked strange to him. He couldn't tell what kind of spider caused the bite. Well, now he can. We have to take him the envelope. Another thing. The sheriff just told me Chapman had a hiding place inside the bathtub where the jacuzzi motor is. So are the bad guys here yet? Hey, Gabo. They here? No, what are you talking about? Sorry about that, Bennett. You don't see a lot of movies, do you? A secret hiding place under the bathtub? Huh? Don't worry, I'll find the mechanism that opens it. Yes, maybe that's where the clue we're looking for is hidden. That could be it. Sorry, I gotta go. So, the only thing in there was that box? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Hey, I'm going into the bridge to prepare the welcoming party. When will you finish explaining how Brian escaped from Happy Dale? After the catapoom bam crack a boom! Banana! It was really frightening sometimes. Anyway. Hmm. Well, I think I've searched through everything now, except that over there. Gabo? You'll be happy to know that the grenades work! <laughs> this is gonna be one crazy party. I'm not interested in the cartridges, but those things, what great memories they bring back. I haven't seen a glow stick for ages. Bottles of shampoo, bath gel, a sponge, that kind of stuff. It's a jacuzzi with a million little soothing jets aimed at every part of your body for maximum relaxation. That's my suitcase. I always keep it in my car with a few changes of clothes, a toiletry bag, and some pajamas. I got used to carrying it around during those years when I never knew where I would wake up. What wild and crazy times. Yes. Now it'll be a piece of cake. Shoot! It's pitch black down there. This only magnifies what I can see. But if there's no light, all I will see is a much larger, dark space. That sounds good. That thing over there looks like a boot, doesn't it? Yeah, that's the way it's normally done. In this situation, of course, that's not the important thing to do. What I need is to find the right place to shoot the arrow to reach my goals. Okay, ready. Let's see how good my aim is. I bet I'm the first person ever who's happy to have caught a boot while fishing. 
Seems like there's something inside. Well, how about that? A laptop computer. Let's see if I can have it ready for when Bennett returns. What do you think? Can you see anything? Effectively, gentlemen. The spider that was inside the envelope was an actual Madagascar queen spider. I don't need to tell either of you just how far away Madagascar is from here. And that the spider couldn't crawl here on its own. Effectively. Poisonous, but not deadly. Its venom paralyzes the victim for hours and is then slowly metabolized by the body without leaving a trace behind. That means that Chapman was paralyzed when he died, which completely rules out the suicide theory. Doctor, you've earned this. Honorary Assistant Sheriff. It belonged to Chapman. Effectively, a Madagascar queen. I should have expected that. And this wire... Enter password? How would I know what Chapman's password was? Let's try it out. Nope. Well... Nope. <laughs> this has got to be it. Damn! That's a good one. Mm, too bad. Yeah, his wife's name. This has to work. And it didn't either. That's a good one. Mm, too bad. Let's try it out. Nope. The 19th of August, 1947. You simply gotta try the person's date of birth. Well, sometimes it works. His rank? Damn! Nothing. No strokes of luck coming my way. It has something written on it. Hurricane. Could that be Chapman's boxing name? I can't think of anything else to enter. In fact, I can't even remember what passwords I've already tried. It's written on his boxing gloves, so maybe that's it. Excellent. Loading. National Security Database. Eliminator Agent TV3968. Agency requires level 4 clearance. Name, Andrea Hickok, alias Tarantula Jane Eyre. Date admitted October 27, 2003. Date dismissed June 25, 2006. Missions, your level 3 access code does not allow this information to be displayed. Reasons for dismissal, your level 3 access code... What's this email message? Looks like it hasn't been sent yet. From Jerome D. Chapman to Judge Latricia Whitley. Subject, Basco Innocent. I've attempted to reach you by phone, but your secretary has become an insurmountable barrier to our communications. I need to make you aware of the following facts. One, Colonel Kordsmeyer has been embezzling funds from the U.S. Army, acting behind the back of his own country. Two, during his mission on Mala Island, he had some highly qualified mercenaries under his command. 
and their leader was a bloodthirsty woman, a former agent for the government. Her code name is Tarantula. Three. Right now, all we know is that she was an AE, agent eliminator, who specializes in the method known as tossing the hot potato. In other words, don't be surprised by this, she eliminates the target by getting an innocent bystander involved as a scapegoat. Four, in the case at hand, the innocent person in question is Brian Basque. Let's finish this mail, and Dr. Ian Bennett will corroborate the veracity of this story. So then, I hit the send button, and... Now I understand everything. Hmm? Judge Whitley just called me, wondering how the deceased Chabin was able to send her an email message mentioning my name and Brian's. She gave me an appointment tonight at my own apartment in New York City. Okay then, let's go there immediately. Soon. But first, let's do justice for Chapman. Let's reenact the crime. After seeing Tarantula's profile on the web, Chapman started writing an email message to Judge Whitley about how Brian is innocent when the phone rang. It was Barry, the old guy from the gas station. He said there were some strangers asking where Chapman's cabin was, but then the line was cut off, as well as Chapman's internet connection. Fearing the worst, Chapman grabbed his laptop. Then, he stuck his laptop in a fishing boot. He hid it in the well, and after that, he came back inside. And waited. He saw the envelope drop through the mail slot. He opened it, and the spider bit him. He must have become completely paralyzed in just a few seconds. Then Tarantula came in, prepared to do what she does best. She took his hand, held the gun up to his forehead, and then bang. Ooh. Bennett! Get down! Uh. Bennett! It's too late! Go start the car! They following us? Not for long. Poor Bennett. <sighs> Wake me up when we get to New York. No way. You've got to tell me how Brian escaped from Happydale. Banana! Now, where were we? Following your escape plan, Brian climbed into the ventilation ducts, but then he came across Kurgan's decapitated body. He found the head and tried to hide it by sticking it into a furnace, which turned on when he closed the door. The head was reduced to ashes and... And then he came home to daddy. Even after dying, that psycho's managed to screw everything up for me. Now how do I escape? The cards are in your favor. Improvise. Come on already, Gabo. Can you stop it with that line, please? Improvise. You and Kurgan are almost the same height, and you have the same build. What would happen if they found his beheaded body dressed in your clothes tomorrow? <laughs> what? I can't do that. Kurgan's back is hairy as an ape. They'll recognize him in a second. Do some hair removal. What about his freaky long fingernail? They'll know it's Kurgan as soon as they see it. Trim it. And I have a tattoo on... on my ass. And he doesn't. Draw one on him. What about his blood type, his shoe size, his DNA? Go to Bennett's office and switch the medical files. Try to think on your toes, Brian. You know, in the end, it'll turn out you're right. Kurgan's body could pass for mine. If I switch his medical records with mine, cut off his disgusting fingernail, copy the tattoo I have, 
well, near the small of my back, wax his shoulders, and set things up in such a way that they decide not to look for his head or suspect foul play when they can't find it. That way they'll think the dead body's mine and... Nobody looks for a dead man. But make it snappy, Basco. Remember, either you're escaping at 12 midnight or you're not escaping at all. What came after entering the casino? Go into the air ducts through the vent. About that tattoo of mine that I have to draw on Kurgan. Since you're so good at that artsy-fartsy stuff, why don't you paint it? Forget it. I don't see myself looking at you on all fours and me painting Kurgan's behind. Well, that's kind of the idea. No way. I was going to offer you a truckload of cash. Your loss. Okay. Do you have anything that might pass for a tattoo? No. But I'll listen to any and all ideas. Add a thou to the two grand I already owe you. Done. In the third drawer of my cabinet, there are some artist pens. Grab a 0.005 and it should pass. Too bad I don't have a 0.037. I love deals with friends. You know, I'm not going to bug you anymore about this tattoo business. My unstable mental health will thank you for that. Why do I have to wait to escape right at midnight? Because it is right then that the guards by the entrance change shifts. You'll have a little more than 37 seconds to slide down the cable with no fear of being seen. I'm going to keep planning my escape, Gabo. Good for you. Well, like Gabo says, I'll have to improvise. <laughs>